to move on to facts or facts now. You only have to look around not far probably to see how much plastic is in our lives, mm -hmm. but have you ever really thought about how much is in the entire world? I know it's hard to get a perfect number to this because there's so much of it, but the UN estimates that one million plastic bottles are purchased every minute. That's around the world, and about five trillion plastic bags are used every year. Now, there was a study in 2017 and estimated about 8.3 billion tons of plastic in the world, and about three quarters of that is all just trash. This gives me, uh, like, um, claustrophobic nightmares. The trash is just imploding in on us. Well, unfortunately, all that plastic waste, it's getting into our streams and rivers and eventually the oceans. Experts estimate there are more than five trillion pieces of plastic in our oceans, and most of them are very tiny. Right, so those tiny microplastics, they're also called nurdles, mm -hmm. okay? Nurdles with a U. Yep, and just now there's a nurdle patrol to clean them up. We got Jace Tunnel is the director of the nurdle patrol. So joining us now to talk a little bit about this, so let's first explain the idea of what a nurdle is and how the name came to be. Okay, Jeb, a uh, nurdle is a small plastic pellet and uh, it's actually the size of like a lentil, uh, less than five millimeters. And it's the raw material to almost everything plastic that we use on a daily basis. So whenever we're finding these out in the environment, you know, this isn't a plastic bottle that has uh, degraded over time. This is actually the raw material that got out at the manufacturing site or during transportation before it was even made into a product. So what you're saying is that the what we're talking about when we're talking about nurdles isn't plastic that's been broken down? No, so uh, plastic that's been broken down over time that was, was a product at one time is considered secondary plastic. Uh, we actually are talking about primary plastic. So primary plastic is uh, this little bitty nurdle that's shipped all over the world to be melted down, added color to it, and blown into a product. Mm, so how does that happen? How are the nurdles escaping? Uh, well, uh, we like to say that uh, these nurdles get out uh, throughout the entire value chain, which if you're in the plastics industry, that means something. So that's actually at the manufacturing site whenever these little plastic pellets are being onloaded to a train or a car or bagged up to put on ships, uh, the ship around the world. Uh, actually, during transportation on the rail line or off of uh, boats or trucks, they leak out. And then once these little nurdles are actually uh, uh, offloaded at the factory that's going to melt them down, uh, they can get out into the environment then too. And so whenever it rains, these things are so lightweight that they float, they get into the nearest creek, then uh, into the biggest river, then to the bay, and then ultimately into the ocean. Where it, that's where we're finding them wash up on the beach. This has got to be so frustrating because the video we're showing is of you guys in your organization hand picking these little nurdles. There's got to be a faster way, or do you just have to go with the old school method and literally pick every single one of them up by your fingers? Right. Well, there's a couple of companies that have developed tools where they're, uh, you know, big vacuums that sift out the natural uh, stuff to be able to get just the plastic uh, pieces and pellets out. Um, but the other thing is we're not trying, as an Ertl Patrol, you know, we're not trying to pick every single one of these up. We're trying to show that there is a problem and where the high concentrations are so that then we can target those areas for uh, trying to work with partners to develop policies uh, to better manage how these things are being handled. So how did you realize that there was a nurdle problem? Um, well, I'm uh, from Corpus Christi, Texas, and uh, we were at the beach. There were several of us at the beach and uh, we noticed all these little tiny plastic pellets in the high tide line. And uh, actually social media is how it all kind of got, got started. I took a picture of it and somebody said, hey, that's a spill, you need to call the Coast Guard. So, you know, uh, a couple hours later, the Coast Guard was called, uh, then the state agency here in Texas was called and they met me out at the beach and they said, you know, there's nothing we can do about it. We don't know how to clean it up. Uh, we don't know where they came from, so there's nobody to help pay for the spill. So uh, that's what started up Nurdle Patrol. We started up a Facebook page so that we could all communicate on how many we're finding where. And we were just going to monitor like 20 miles stretch of beach. Well, within a couple of weeks after starting up that Facebook page, we had 300 people that were on there. Uh, every state in the Gulf of Mexico, including down in Mexico, they were like, we want to know if this is coming to our beach. 
And so now you look at it and we've had over 17,000 surveys done all across uh, 25 different countries across the world. And it's, it's really blown up into something that we can see a bigger picture so that we can really target areas with high concentrations to try to change policy. Well, I love that you brought the awareness. Obviously, you're kind of sharing this experience with other people who have similar experiences. So what do we do with that? You're trying to change state policy, but I mean, this is going to take a long time to clean all this up. Yeah, so well, we ask people, because people are always like, oh, well, how can we get involved in this? This sounds great. And it's like, the only thing you need, you don't even need any supplies. Go to a, a riverbank, go down to the shoreline if you're at the beach or to a lake and spend 10 minutes and look at the water line, look at the, the high strand line if there's one there, like usually where sticks and leaves are, kind of dig around in there. If you see plastic pellets, for that 10 minute period, count how many you find and then go to nerdlepatrol.org and we have a reporting form. So you put how many you found in there, the date you were there in the location and it shows up on a map. And this map is kind of like a Google Earth type platform mm -hmm. where you can zoom in, like you could zoom into your house if you wanted to, mm. but um, your data will show up as a color coded dot on there and even a zero. So if somebody goes out and they find zero, that's considered data too. Uh, but you'd be surprised at the concentrations people are finding like over a thousand in a 10 minute period by hand. And so that, that color dot would be a purple. So the warmer the color is, the higher the concentration of pellets is. And, and we're able to use that information uh, by showing the state agencies that are supposed to be managing these companies and the handling of plastic pellets to try to say, hey, look, uh, you need to change something in your stormwater or wastewater permit. Right. How yeah. wow. Well, uh, it's probably we want to put our head in the sand and not think about because, yeah, 10 minutes having that many is problematic. Chase yeah. Tunnel from the Nurdle Patrol, I really thank you for bringing the awareness to us about this. We would have thought it would have been plastic broken down. Yeah, I would have been.